Hello everyone, Jackie Tomlin here and welcome to another episode of When Spirit Speaks Podcast. Uh, guys, I just want to take a minute and tell you how much I appreciate you. I appreciate your feedback on the shows. I appreciate what you want to hear topics on. Um, just totally listening to you guys, okay? Uh, so contact information is JackieTomlin.com. And of course, the email address is Jackie at JackieTomlin.com. Phone number 804-731-2302. Let me continue to hear from you. I really enjoyed your feedback and your feedback, you know, pretty much justifies the show, what I do and the topics that I talk about. Okay, guys, so we're going to get into uh, the show here in a minute. Today, we're going to discuss energy healing and Reiki. But first, we're going to uh, discuss today there is an eclipse and tomorrow brings in Mercury retrograde, which is tomorrow is April 21st, uh, 2023. Now, this time frame is going to run from the 21st through May 14th. And it is what we call the time frame of the unexpected. Um, what can you expect with the Mercury retrograde? You can expect the word is bajiggity. Okay. What does bajiggity mean? It means you're like a cat on a hot tin roof. Okay. It means that you're anxious, you're excited, you're overwhelmed, you're all of this all knotted up and all rolled into one. So it's beyond scattered energy. And during retro, it is perfectly normal. Okay. Now, um, Usually during a retrograde, it is said that you do not start anything new uh, and that you don't sign anything. And in doing my readings this week on YouTube, I found that a lot of you are signing documents and that's fine. You know, I'm not going to tell you don't sign documents during retro, but I am going to tell you to be careful and read the fine print of those documents. Okay. The same way with not starting anything new, opposite of that, I do find that this retro is going to be all about new new friends, new social circles, new opportunities, new jobs. Uh, it's just the word new is going to be attached to it. Now, with new is the past. Retro does tend to open up something that brings in the past. People from the past or repeating a cycle that you might necessarily not want to repeat. Okay. It is famous for that. Now, mind you, what I am not as I am not an astrologer, okay? But we do discuss retro on my channel and y'all may visit my YouTube channel at youtube.com backslash psychic jaggy. And I think you will have a blast over there. There is a uh, soul tribe uh, that is over there that is like no other and will welcome you with open arms. Now, with that said, let's move on to today's talk topic. We're talking about body, mind, and soul and some energy work. And I really think your energy work is going to be significant. It's it's always significant, always, okay? But I do find it to be particularly significant with helping some of y'all get through retro, that unknown and that bajiggity feeling, okay? Uh, energy work, also known as vibrational healing or the life force, you know, um, some call it the healing touch. We're going to discuss Reiki today. It's mo one of the mo more common forms of energy work and it's very simple and very simple to to learn um it's very effective and uh we're going to talk about that a little bit today okay now when i speak of reiki it is the method of aligning your chakras okay and what are your chakras it's your energy fields okay it's your energy fields from your head to your toe and you carry seven energy fields. So if you've heard the source of having your chakras aligned, this is exactly what I'm talking about. It's aligning your energy fields. Uh, so we'll discuss that a little bit. And, and the nice thing about Reiki is it can be done distantly. Okay. Um, meaning I could send you Reiki or another Reiki master can send you Reiki, vice versa. It can be done distantly. It could also be done hands-on. It can be done in person. It can be done hands-on. And it can be done hands-off. So we're going to discuss all of that today. Okay. Now, how do you go about finding a practitioner? You know, it's it's kind of hard to say. It's, it's different in different areas. Okay. Um, your doctor, your regular PCP, um, your yoga instructor, 
reach out to your spiritual community, acupuncturist, and probably massage therapist will know how to get you in touch with a Reiki practitioner. And some, there are some listings, but there's very few and far in between. And I know different areas of the country, you know, things are just different. Okay. Let me say this because I get this when I speak of energy healing, I speak to Reiki and the first thing that comes out. Okay. You do not have to know how to meditate in order to do Reiki. Meditation is something that e comes easily for some people and not so easily for other people. OK, and I totally get that. So you need to understand you do not have to know how to meditate to do this. OK, I honestly think it's one of the easiest things to learn uh, with definitely getting great results from this. Um, I was asked a question last night when give a shout out to Miss Elizabeth. Um, do you have to be a healer? in order to perform Reiki. And no, you don't. Anyone can learn to do it, okay? And it's energy work. So no, you don't have to be a particular healer or carry that title to learn how to do energy work. The other thing that you need to know is that there is no right or wrong way to do Reiki. It's kind of like reading the tarot. There's no right or wrong way. Um, I am a Reiki master and I do offer a distant course. We'll talk about that on learning or becoming certified as a Reiki master. But my thing of it is, is you can give someone the basics, but you cannot tell them if they're doing it right or if they're doing it wrong. Each individual practitioner will know what works for them and what is most effective. Okay. You can be certified in Reiki at different levels. So you might meet someone to say they're a level two or they're a level one or they're a Reiki master. Okay. It's just a, their levels of study, their levels of practice. You know, it's one of those, it's definitely one of those things that practice makes perfect that you have to do to work to, to level up or whatever. Uh, a master, let me explain the word master to you. Okay. No one will ever master Reiki. The same that they'll never master the tarot or they will never master the paranormal. The terminology of a Reiki master simply means that you have reached and obtained the highest level of certification that you can go and you can now teach Reiki to others and you can certify others. Okay. It by no means that you are a master at Reiki. And I, I know a lot of people get really, really confused with that. The maximum result, the maximum goal in Reiki is to be able to ascend it distantly, to do a full distant attunement successfully would be your ultimate level of achieving your master's level, okay? There are various forms, various forms, various forms that people incorporate as those energy healers. And like I said, it's about... Uh, what works for you. I have some that use oils. Okay. Uh, my preferred master method is crystals. Um, I love the placement of crystals and I do incorporate crystals into my Reiki practice. Okay. And I do use crystals distantly. And one thing I wanted, to, other thing I want to discuss is when is there a good time for a Reiki session. Um, I have been approached with, well, I've got so much going on right now, let things die down and then we'll do a Reiki session. Let me say this. There is never a bad time for an energy healing. Okay. Let me repeat that. There's never a bad time. I mean, we're talking about energy healing. There's never a bad time. It's not because there's too much on your plate. It's not because you've got too much to do. There's just never a bad time for a Reiki session. Now, I also want to cover uh, how to send Reiki distantly. It is not about meditation. It is about your visualization. Okay. And part of that visualization is working on someone else. It is more ideal that that person is standing still, sitting still, or lying down for them to receive it. Um, K 
can you send some quick Reiki to someone as a healing energy? Absolutely. There's no reason you cannot. Now with me and particularly that I do like working with crystals. Um, some for me, I'll tell you what works distantly is a bear, a stuffed bear. Very simple, but it's hard to find a stuffed bear, bear that has all four extended limbs where the legs are flat and it's not a bear that's setting up. OK, because this will allow me to do the crystal work as well. And I think you'll find it to be very, very effective. Now. Like I said, this could be hands on, hands off. You open that crown chakra, which is the top, the very top of their head by your hand placement, you know, and the course will go in and talk about what is your dominant hand. You will figure out what that is. It's by vibration. It's by knowing. And some people, their dominant hand varies, okay? That it may start off as their left hand, and it may move off into the right hand. Um, it is key that you learn how to do Reiki on yourself before practicing on someone else. You need to know how it affects you, how to heal yourself, how to move on, you know? And some of the key to this, I think, honestly, is relaxation. OK, not meditation, but relaxation, you know, music, your lighting, your aromatherapy, whatever relaxes you the time of day. And, and above all, it needs to be quiet for that relaxation. You know, you don't want to do this when you've got kids running in and out or you're going to be disrupted by the phone. You want to take a time of day that relaxes you. Now, let me tell you what you can expect and what I've been reported. OK. Some you can expect to fall asleep because it is a deep sense of relaxation. And I've had several report that on numerous attempts, they end up asleep and there's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um, some will feel like a tingling sensation, uh, whether it's their arm, their leg or something like that. I have many, many report waves of color that they can see waves of colors, okay? And some report nothing at all, and some report all of the above that I just listed. Every individual is different. And if they report to you that they felt nothing at all, you need to know that that's fine too, because now we're going to talk about that 30-day cleansing period after an initial Reiki session. Now, normally a cleansing period only applies to someone who's never had an attunement. I have seen the cleansing period apply to people that have gone a good length of time without a full Reiki session, including myself. Okay. It usually hits between days 21 to 30 after you've been, after you've done the attunement. Okay. It's recommended in that first 30 days that you stay away from red meat, caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. It's not mandatory. It's a recommendation. Okay. And of course, you drink plenty of water. But what you will find is in that first 30 days, even if you're working on yourself, that you're automatically weaned back from red meat, caffeine, nicotine, and alcohol. Not that you're intentionally doing it. It just kind of happens. You will also find that your hydration and increase in water has also happened. And let me tell you, it's very, very common. Like I said, I want to go back to stress that it's in the first 30 days. It generally hits from days 21 to 30 that there are two to three life altering changes. And what I mean by life altering, let's talk about your chakras. OK, let's talk about that process of aligning your chakras. Now, the way I want to describe this is let's say you have a stack of pennies, like a roll of pennies sitting out and it's not perfectly stacked. So there might be a little bit of a curve to it. That's kind of what your chakras are going to look like in those colors. OK, and your goal is to pull them straight in a line. So you want them straight side to side. OK like forming a tower. It's like forming, taking your body and forming that tower of colors. But you also want your chakras to be level from side to side. So, and in doing an attunement, you might find you get to someone's throat chakra, okay? 
and you're looking at the throat chakra from side to side, it might be wide on the right side in line with everything else. And then you go over to the left side and it's got narrow. So you're going to adjust and pull that chakra back in line with everything else. So in essence, what you have done is you have opened someone's throat chakra. What does that mean? It does mean that they could very well mouth off to people for the next 30 days, that they can say things that they have been holding themselves back from, that they can feel freer than what they have. Okay. So that's the best way I can describe, I think, without the visual of how to align your chakras is pulling that roll of pennies. You want, it's a, it's a field of colors. Each chakra carries a color. You want that color to run from top to bottom. You want them to be even. You want them to run all the way through. Now, someone has also approached me, more than one of you have approached me about your chakras spinning. I personally don't visualize chakras as spinning, but I tell you what, they do run all the way through and you need to know that. OK, so like if you're working on, let's say, the heart chakra, that heart chakra is in the area of the heart, but it goes all the way through to their backside. So that's going to be important as well. Now, you as a practitioner may pick up on a vibration of something that you weren't aware of when working on someone. You know, if your hand got hot on the left heart chakra, if your hand got hot on the right leg, things like this, you want to disclose to the person that you're working on. Doesn't mean that there's something medically wrong. It's just making them aware. And believe me when I say Reiki is never at any point in time to be substituted for any doctor or medical profession. Okay, this is a holistic thing. It is considered energy healing, but your energy is part of you and part of who you are. Now, I was given the gift of certification by my mom, okay? And she gave this to me because my interest in Reiki was one, I had many psychics tell me, if you're going to work as a psychic, you need to learn Reiki for yourself. The other one was at the time I had a Siberian Husky. Uh, she was getting up there in age and she had hip dysplasia. So my main concern was taking her out of pain, giving her some comfort. And that was my whole interest in Reiki and why I started researching and decided I wanted to move forward with my certifications. Okay. Now, working with animals, it's the same as a person. You will get different reactions. Okay. So the husky's name was Sasha and the, our cat at the time, her name was Roxy. Now, when you did the hand placement and you set those hands on her crown chakra of Sasha, she would immediately lie down and wait for more. Just immediately. I don't care where you are in the house. I don't care where you are outside. The moment your hands went on her hand in that placement, she would immediately lie down. My cat, you place the hands on her head and it's like the moment that crown chakra opened, her eyes would race back and forth and she would dart. She would dart away from you. And she'd eventually get to the point that she was not going to have you put her hands or your hands on her head. She knew something went on. Okay. It's the same with working on a friend of mine. She had two dogs and I had one dog that was very receptive of it. Thankfully, it was the one that was there to work on. And the other dog just flipped, absolutely flipped out, was not having it. But it's very unique because you can see the moment it has hit them or the moment that that chakra is trying to open, that they know something has shifted and something is going on. And, you know, animals are very, very perceptive to things, you know, paranormal or anything going on with them. They are especially receptive to energy. And this is energy work. Okay. Now, when you go and you do a Reiki session and you're doing it for, uh, let's say the purpose of, I don't know, uh, a toothache, okay? Let's say you're doing it for that. You cannot do Reiki for a toothache per se, okay? It goes into the body for that of the greater good, which means you are healing, you are aligning. It is 
aligning everything. Like I said, your focus is letting the white light in for the greater good. Meaning you, when you reach that crown chakra, you're going to push all that ick out through the top of their head. Okay. Anything that wasn't supposed to be there, you're going to push it out. Just drive it right out of their body. So you can't have intent of, I'm just going to do it to fix this, or I'm just going to do it to fix that. That's not the way it works. Now, effectiveness reports that I've had uh, nausea, back pain, toothache, migraines. These things have been effective. Uh, what that initial got them in ranking and what initially, I'm not going to say healed them, but definitely gave them some relief. Okay. Unintentionally, what has happened is when I've done a Reiki session is that they tell me that they had a cut or something that I didn't know about that was healed the next day, uh, which I always thought was pretty, pretty fascinating. Okay. So, you know, like I said, you can discuss an area of concern, you know, you can address an area of concern. You don't want to put your intent there. It can affect your whole session as a practitioner. Okay. You can be aware of it and move on. But like I said, your focus has got to be that of the greater good. Okay. Uh, when you get to the bottom, um, what I would tell them is you want to sweep things clean. After you have pushed all the ick out, just go back with that visualization from, then you're going to work from head, from toe to head with the sweeping effect of sweeping away that debris. Okay. Um, it will also leave the person that you are practicing on any total state of relaxation. I have never had anyone report anything otherwise, even those ones that never had an experience while getting their Reiki attunement. Okay. For myself, I used it for grounding and centering. You know, I do several readings a day and at the end of the day, or at the end of the couple days or at the end of the week, depending on how busy I've been, there needs to be some kind of release for me to let go of your problems and your energy. Okay. So Reiki is a truly big, big part of my life. Um, and it's also, um, if those that know me, I've been through several, several, several <laughs> surgical procedures and I Reiki was a daily part for me, sometimes more than once, as well as that crystal placement. Now, I can say this, you know, of course, I'm dealing with specialists, uh, cardiologists and, you know, vascular surgeons and just regular surgeons. And they were amazed at what it, I can tell them about Reiki. But do you know the thing about it is everyone knows what it is. Everyone Every specialist, every doctor I had have done their research and will do not discredit it. Now, as of men of science and women, you know, they can't recommend it because they don't cannot recommend the holistic path because they fear you taking that over the medical path. Okay, but they certainly do encourage it. Now, like I said, Reiki practitioners are different in all areas. Uh, one of my reasons for my certifications here locally, it is used in gyms. It is used in massage parlors. And my biggest thing is Reiki is offered in every cancer center that we have. Okay. And some businesses are now offering it uh, to their employees, which I think is awesome. Uh, I have a friend in Canada that says that Reiki is now covered by insurance. So who knows where this will end up going? Okay. Now, like I said, I was given the gift of the course by my mother of uh, going through the different level, levels of certification in which, you know, she was my practice specimen primarily. And uh, she supported and encouraged me in all that I did. It took me six years to develop how to, to teach Reiki at a distance. Okay. You know, that if you could send Reiki as a distance and I can tell you how to do Reiki, how could I put it into a course that you yourself could learn it? And like I said, it was six years in the making 
but yeah, I, we figured it out and it is a Reiki master's handbook and certification. It takes you from the beginning level all the way through masters. It'll take you from, if you're, it doesn't matter if you're level one, two or whatever, it is a full course that will take you all the way through to your master's um, course that's done on your own time and take all the time that you need. Um, now how many certifications have I done? I couldn't tell you. We put the course out in 2010. Uh, I do continuously work with my Reiki masters. I've gone to see them certify groups of people. I've seen them do, um, you know, like I said, literally groups, college campuses, you name it. And it, it's been a wonderful thing. Okay. Um, But my thing of it is, it's no wrong way and there's no right time. So speaking of my mom, okay, I am offering on YouTube live. I have done readings for fundraisers, but I want you to mark your calendars because on April 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern, I am doing my first fundraiser on YouTube. And it's $10 and $20 readings, $10 for a three card pool, $20 for six cards and over. And, you know, if you want to do something like a full nine card spread, it's whatever you want to donate. Half of those proceeds are going to the Nation National Breast uh, Cancer Foundation. So please stop by and please join me there. Um, there are other things that can help you get through this area of this ick of Mercury retro. Okay. Meditation. If you are able to, we will do a session on meditation on what will help you ground, what will help you center, what will help you focus. Okay. Journaling. Journaling is a form of relaxation. And I had someone else mention coloring, like the adult coloring books. Okay. Um, connecting with nature. And sometimes, you know, that could be just Taking that barefooted walk outside for 20 minutes would maybe all that you need. You do need to be ready to reconnect with your past. Okay. Um, and you can expect communication problems, setbacks, and delays, mechanical and technical problems. Okay. And like I said above all, read what you sign. Now, retro only comes in three times a year, and I'm not going to say that energy healing is only appropriate for Mercury Retro. Uh, energy healing is something I would encourage each and every individual to incorporate in their lives. It just, it makes that big of a difference. Uh, and for me, it becomes like an almost a must-have or some type of an addiction. Okay, so... Uh, your other retro dates that are upcoming for 2023 will be August 23rd to September 15th, December 13th to January 1st of 2024. So if you want to plan, you can plan accordingly, but that's the upcoming dates of retro. Now, also, we are looking at putting together, just to give you some heads up, my YouTube family that uh, Soul Family Chatters, we are looking at meeting, a face-to-face -face meeting. We're also looking at having some fun, whether we're working with tarot cards or perhaps a haunted plantation, but we are planning to meet in Virginia Beach, Virginia, the weekend of September 15th. And there will be, that's a tentative date that gives you an idea. And if this is something you're interested in, please let me know. Now, again, my contact information, you may always reach me on my website at JackieTomlin.com. Uh, my YouTube channel is youtube.com backslash psychic Jackie phone number 804-731-2302 and yes I do receive text messages as well as if you're going to join me on social media please make sure you have found the link actually on my website okay there's a lot of fake accounts going up that are not me i am not going to reach out to you personally i'm not going to offer you a reading personally and i'm certainly 
not going to ask you for money. I think one that may not be on uh, my website as of yet is TikTok. I am on TikTok and that is Jackie Tomlin and the number zero. So guys, reach out to me. Let me continue to hear from you. Let me hear from you on these podcasts. Let me hear on the subject matter that you want to speak, want me to speak about. And we will go from there. Uh, the success of this depends on you, uh, like everything I've done. And this has been absolutely wonderful. The feedback has been wonderful. Um, and the listeners have been wonderful. So thank you guys for joining me yet again. And I shall see you next week. And until then, you guys have a fantastic week. And don't forget to check out your videos. They are all free by your Zodiac sign on my YouTube channel. See y'all next week. Bye.